how much of this when when this all began say march 2020 were you already kind of libertarian leaning that you were very skeptical of government and all of these uh large institutions like the world economic forum or is this something that has become like an organic progression over the past two years nowhere near the degree of skepticism that i have now hmm. i i don't think any of us that have had our eyes open and experienced this can come out the other side without um profoundly changing how you view government and uh um centralized power and it may be that folks like yourself i think that economists in general may have a better comprehension of these macro uh, phenomena. Um, macroeconomics is, is one of the key branches and it forces you to think about these things. But for a, a doc like me, busy working with the government, trying to uh, help develop vaccines or other biodefense measures, I didn't really spend much time thinking about things. I, I've been to the World Health Organization enough times and spoken enough times and sat in enough meetings with very important people to be profoundly skeptical about the World Health Organization and its utility in anything other than uh, scraping money out of people in order to finance a big fancy building and a lot of employees that have to live at the, uh, um, the cost uh, profile of Geneva. Uh, which is not trivial, uh, but uh, the the um, the skepticism about government. If I can just illustrate, I I kind of grew up in a world, uh, a scientific research world dominated by Anthony Fauci. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, starting with uh, AIDS, and uh, I've seen him throughout my entire career dominate science and uh, um, routinely break all rules of ethics in clinical research that if I broke, I would basically be excommunicated. I would no longer be able to practice clinical mm -hmm. research. And so it's just kind of, I think for myself and a lot of folks, we've just come to terms with the fact that the rules don't apply to Tony. Uh, and, and it was uh, the metaphor of the boiling frog uh, with all of this. Uh, I think that that I, I had become uh, numbed to the gross inefficiencies of the entire uh, HHS uh, world. I, the, when the key moment for me was that Brett Weinstein podcast, uh, Dark Horse podcast with Steve Kirsch, uh, where Brett started talking about the big why and the big how. How, how could this all be coordinated in the way that it's coordinated uh, and why? And ever since that moment, uh, which led me to uh, being a a major voice in pointing out, for instance, the uh, Trusted News Initiative and its role in censorship globally, et cetera. I've been a little bit obsessed with how could this possibly be happening and why? Uh, how could, and as I traveled about Europe and, and the world and, and all over the United States, I, I saw these same behaviors and these same media uh, plays and the same uh, strategies with physicians globally. Uh, mm. And uh, that was really hard for me to process. How could this possibly ha happen? And I had a film crew come onto the farm early on, uh, which included people that had uh, actually been to the World Economic Forum. And they uh, spoke to me about the Great Reset and uh, um, Klaus Schwab and what goes on at WEF. And my reaction was, uh, okay, fine. Um, let's stay focused on uh, the medical science and epidemiology and public health. And if you say so, I don't want to contradict you on film, but it all sounds kind of crazy to me. Uh, and then I had another 
uh, two people visit the farm a few months later who were from a, a, a very large organization, public health organization that I, I don't want to disclose, uh, um, a nonprofit uh, that is a advocacy organization for vaccine safety and children's health, among other things. And these two, uh, one's a lawyer and one's a physician, uh, we're also talking about this same uh, conspiracy theory about the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab and all that. And once again, I thought this just sounded uh, um, a little too far out for me, uh, but I humored them. And, but at that point I started reading about it and learning about it and, and um, trying to put together the pieces that this may be driven by something other than uh, public health, because the, the logic of it being about public health just didn't fit the data of the behaviors. Right. Uh, and that's what led me down uh, to, we, we got it, Jill and I got a copy of COVID-19, The Great Reset by Klaus, which he managed to get out in uh, four months, ostensibly. Uh, I think he posted in April. Uh, um, talking about openly about all this crazy conspiracy talk <laughs> and, and, and about, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the, the whole, uh, you know, fifth, fifth, uh, industrial revolution mm -hmm. and the fusion of man and machine and, uh, the need for, uh, population, uh, modification and, uh, um, resetting the economics, and it was all there. And uh, then, then you have to start taking it seriously. And uh, as as I have, so that forced me to take a dive into what is the World Economic Forum and try to make sense out of it. And then, uh, and then I encountered um, uh, some work, a, a speech that had been. Uh, given uh, last fall by a German uh, economist mm -hmm. that put forth the hypothesis that this was really all about uh, the economics and uh, the uh, pushing towards the limits of the, uh, well, let's, I, I, I hesitate to use the word capitalism, the economic system that we currently operate under in a globalized sense. And, uh, and that that has reached the point where the internal contradictions of its structure economically are starting to uh, cascade mm -hmm. uh, as they did in 07 and 08 with the great recession, but perhaps even more so and the contradictions of uh, mechanization, artificial intelligence, and the other drivers that are resulting in greater manufacturing efficiency and reduced need for labor. Uh, and, and that's kind of what drove me down this pathway of uh, certainly having to actively consider the alternative hypothesis that none of this has really been about public health. And, and processing it from that frame of reference, I'm, I'm compelled, I'm, I'm now in with the crazy conspiracy crowd <laughs> that uh, this has not been about uh, public health. The, the true public, and, and one of the tells here, I think, is that as Bobby Kennedy predicted on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial during the Stop the Mandates rally in D.C. last winter, when he said, once they take power, they will never get it back unless you force them. And that provoked right. uh, a, all kinds of outcry and wails of anguish from the press. Uh, but in fact, he's been exactly right. Uh, and we see that in the maintenance of the uh, state of medical emergency despite the fact that clearly there's no medical emergency. 